Hi everyone, so glad you've joined us today on the program. Pray you're doing great, feeling good, and blessed of the Lord in a mighty way. I'm so glad you've joined us. I'm Carlton Duck, pastor of Gethsemane Baptist Church. A delight to be with you this in this program that uh, I pray will challenge your heart and draw you closer to the Lord. All provided to you by Gethsemane Baptist Church on a live TV. Gethsemane Baptist Church is located here in Lynchburg. And uh, 411 Blue Ridge Street is our address. We'd love for you to come and worship with us. I'll tell you more about that towards the end of the program. But uh, we're going to be looking at some things today from the book of Daniel, chapter 9. And I pray what uh, God has laid on our heart will be a blessing to you today to challenge you in the Word and to strengthen your life and to help you to live and walk closer to the Lord. If ever there was a time we really needed today to understand there is no ordinary God, He's just not God and that's it. He's an extraordinary God, an almighty God, an everlasting God. He is God and we've got to come to that realization and realize that He is our everything. And today, we can exist apart from Him. He gives us the breath that we breathe. He gives us the life that we live. He gives us the provisions that we have. And indeed, we can say, oh, what a mighty God we serve. Today, we're dealing with no ordinary God from the book of Daniel, chapter 9. And I really do pray that this will be a blessing to your heart and your life. Let me just read a portion of that scripture today. And it says this, And whilst I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people, Israel, and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God, yea, whilst I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision of the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. And he informed me and talked with me and said, O Daniel, O Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. You know, and you can read on down through verse 27, and you'll see the rest of the scripture that we're using in this study on the program, Viewpoint. And uh, we realize, we look through the pages of God's word, and we realize that God said this. Jesus said in the book of John 15 and 5, he says, Apart from me, you can do nothing. You realize today you can't do anything. Now, we may think that we have the power to do anything we want to do, make any decision we want to make, act any way we want to act. Not necessarily so. You have no strength apart from what the strength that God gives you today. But then we find in Mark 20 and 27, it states, With God, all things are possible. See the power that resides in this mighty God. Go back to the book of Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. It's God. It's not science. It's not a Big Bang theory. It's not evolution. It's none of those things. It's all God. And there's nothing that our God can't do. There's not a problem he can't solve. There's not a situation he can't turn around. There's not a sickness that he cannot heal. And I could go on and on and on and tell you case after case, situation after situation, but realizing today and coming down to this, that we can't do anything without him on our side and helping us, but also we have got to come to the realization that all things are possible with God. It's not what we do, it's what he does through us. So there's no limit to what our God can do. You remember the old song goes back some years, It is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. With arms wide open, he'll welcome you. It is no secret what our God can do. Praise the Lord. Isn't that good to know today? Paul accurately proclaimed, and he was point on when he said, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. But understand today, that has to be a part of our attitude today. It's not something that we are boasting in and today proud in us of. It's a fact today, it's an attitude of humbleness and belief about what our God can and what our God will do. So as a matter of fact, God delights in doing for his children and providing and blessing us today. And he tells us in Ephesians 3.20, one of my favorite portions of scripture, 
abundantly above all that we can ask or think. This is what he does for us. We really need to start recognizing that and praising God for that and thanking him to the abundance of the blessings that he has poured out upon us today. Now, understanding that we face discouragements in life, don't we? I deal with families every day, every week. I've, I face situations with folks and that are going through times of trial, difficulty, challenge, tragedy, death, sickness, you name it. It just seems like there's no end to it because we're living in a fallen world. And because of that, then we then receive in our flesh the results of that fallen nature. That means we're not perfect. It doesn't mean we're going to have perfect health. It doesn't mean that we're always going to have uh, everything that we want. We face trial. We face challenge. We face difficulty. But it's a comfort to know the same God who said that he can do all things and nothing is impossible with him is the God who, one, guides us through it. And also he the God, he's the God who carries us through it. And he's the God that provides for us while we're in it. And he's the God that brings us out of what we in. So what do, what do I need to do, Pastor? I think one of the greatest things that I see lacking today in the ranks of Christianity today is one word, trust. We are not trusting the Lord in the capacity that we really need to. We exhaust all of our resources, thoughts, mentality, intelligence, family, you name it, everything. And finally, when we come down to the point, none of that's worked, we say, oh, I'll call on God. That's not the way it should be. He should be our first choice, not our last chance. So looking at these scriptures today, Gabriel, Daniel spoke of, and is the same Gabriel who came to Mary uh, 500 years later to announce the birth of of the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. And it seems that when Gabriel shows up, he's got life-changing, earth-altering, and he always brings news to share that's monumental. You know why? Because he can bring that monumental news because we serve an extraordinary God who provides that extraordinary monumental news. So Daniel's praying his heart and his mind was on the nation of Judah, and they were uh, 67 years into the 70 years of Babylonian captivity. So Daniel is in a position, here's an important word, he was desperate for God to rescue them from captivity. How desperate are you today for the Lord to work in your life? How desirous are you of God See, God is not something you just sit on the shelf and you take down when you need it. Actually, you need the Lord every day, don't you? We all do. And today, as the songwriter wrote again, he walks with me, he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. So realizing this today, Daniel's looking for a short-term solution where God wants to put an end to all sin and bring in everything that comes from him that is righteous. So God wants to do, to do something for Daniel more than just what he's asking. And isn't that the way God works? He always is a God who is more than enough. He always brings an abundance with him. And he wants to do an abundance or an amazing thing in your life. Yes, the thief comes to kill, steal, and to destroy. But he said, I've come that you may have life and have it more abundantly in John 10 and 10. So Daniel is desperate. The situations are kind of tough. And so God wants Daniel to understand that he is able to do far more than he can ask. So God wants to go, uh, go to the place of the abundantly beyond the prayer request of Daniel. And by doing that, what that does is bring glory to God. And it just makes it absolutely uh, undisputable that he is the mighty God. So God now has not changed. He never has. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that same desire is here for us today. God wants to do something amazing in your life. But you've got to open your life and trust the Lord that he can do that. Folks, listen, God doesn't kick doors down and just storms in. He comes and he goes where he is welcomed. 
and where we will trust him and put our confidence in him. So if you're discouraged, I want you to listen up to this program and what I'm going to share with you over the next few moments. One is trust God to answer your prayers beyond anything that you could ever imagine. Too many of us have the mentality, let's face it, we just want to get by. We're living in a time of, seems like, almost total governmental dependence. Have you noticed the signs on businesses? They're looking for employees, but nobody wants to go to work. Why? Because the government is just shoveling money their way. Folks, whatever happened to that uh, quality of life of working and providing for your family? I see nothing wrong with that. That's the only ethic I've ever known. And I tell you, God has miraculously always supplied uh, every need. But we're living in a time today that we're not trusting God, we're trusting government. And as long as those checks keep coming in, man, I tell you what, just started another series of stimulus checks. And, and listen, I understand people need money, but they also need to go out and get a job. All right, I'll get off my soapbox. Here's the point. You can depend on the Lord to go beyond today your immediate concerns and what you're in. God is never a God that just gets by like our mentality is so many times that we just want to get by. We just want to get across the line. We just want to get the minimum where God has an abundance today. So you can rely on your Heavenly Father today to care for you in ways today that are far greater and bigger and more exceeding than you could ever think or imagine today. So when we are concerned about, you know, trivial matters today, and many times we are, God is concerned about our ultimate triumph over evil. And folks, that's why we're missing the boat. We're too concerned about making sure that, you know, all those things that we want are met. Notice I said want, I didn't say need. Because we don't, we don't no longer live by the process of the need. We, what we want is what we desire and want to get. But God today is even greater than anything in our life today. So God wants today to atone for the wickedness. And honestly, if you look at the condition of our world, our nation, our communities, we have a lot of wickedness. Have you looked at the crime rate recently? I saw one area, it was like 570 some percent of increase in crime. And you know, we see and we're hearing every day, there's a shooting here, there's a shooting there, there's someone killed here, something has happened there, something is going on, there's problems, there's domestic issues. I mean, it's just every way you look. So we, we really need today the atoning grace of God today to come and stomp out this wickedness that's in our land, but we've got to learn to cooperate with God. So the word atone means to cover. Now, it describes what Jesus did on the cross, but also he extracted and he removed. When you ask the forgiveness of the Lord, I want you to know today, he removes the stain, he moves every evidence, he blots out, as the word says, our transgressions. There's no evidence, there's no residue, there's nothing left of that sin that was in our life. So his shed blood today can take care of every sin today and, and shield us today from the very wrath of God. Because of the salvation of the Lord that I've received and I pray you have today, thank God I'm shielded from the wrath of God. And thank God he's made a way for you and I today. There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Romans 8 and 1. So Jesus took care of the penalty of our sin at the cross, paid it in full and won our salvation and obtained today our righteousness. And because of the blood of Jesus today, Satan's hounds today, let me tell you what, Satan today is facing a dilemma because he is headed for a bottomless pit and then he's headed for a lake of fire. But when Satan is bound today, let me tell you what, there's coming a day and righteousness will prevail. Now, we today need to look to the Lord and trust in Him. Christians are kind of wavering. I don't know if you've noticed that. They're not firm and consistent. They're scared to death. We're living in a state of fear. We're living in today in a position that we're scared of everything. 
We're scared to get the shot. We're scared not to get the shot. (laughs) We're scared of this. We're scared of that. We're scared to go out at night. We're scared to do anything anymore. Have you realized that Paul wrote to Timothy as he's writing to us and he said, God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind? Why are you so fearful? Why are you filled with fear? You know, folks, listen, we need to trust the Lord. I keep going back to that. It's not wrong to ask God to meet our immediate needs. He will, he can, and he shall. But listen, don't just stop there. Well, Lord, bless my forward no more. Bless this and do that and help me with this and help me with that. There's a bigger story here. There's a bigger thing that God wants to do in our lives. So trust God to answer your prayer beyond anything today that you could ever imagine or think. And God wants to do that today. We're trying to limit God. We want a little bitty God that we today can control. He is a great and mighty God, and the ones that need controlling is not God, it's us. We need to be spirit-filled. And when you will be filled with God's spirit, that means today then you are controlled by the spirit of God. You're not walking around scared to death. You're not scared to come to church. You're not scared. You know, I never understood this. People are scared to come to church, but they're not scared to go out and eat in restaurants and go to uh, other places and businesses and shop and get gas and everything else. What's the difference? My heavens. I- I'm telling you today, we need to put our trust in the Lord our confidence, and pray, and know God is able to answer prayers. Stop praying those mealy mouth prayers and start praying the abundant prayers that God can answer and do in your life. And you've got to do a couple things. Here's one of them. You've got to believe. You've got to believe what God can do. Secondly, you've got to put your faith into action. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of, the evidence of things not seen. Thank God. Mark eleven twenty two. have faith in God. Third, you've got to trust the Lord, and you can trust him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and God will always come through and bless and help you in that time of need. Secondly, trust God to accomplish his plans, which is also beyond anything that you can imagine. God has a plan for my life, and he has a plan for yours. Are you living in God's plan or are you just out doing your own thing today? You can rely on God to do his will and you can depend upon today our glorious heavenly father. Our father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Done where? On earth as it is in heaven. Why is it, why is it being done on earth? Because it's being done through us. Because we today are living for the Lord. And so you can carry out God's design that he has for you and see God work mightily in your life and do exceedingly and great and wonderful things today. Daniel was thinking about the his nation's immediate future and, and was basically Judah's ultimate future and what was going to happen. And Jerusalem was in ruins at that time and Daniel received a prophecy, this prophecy, but God then assures him that Jerusalem will be rebuilt. I'm telling you, when God makes a promise, God keeps a promise, doesn't he? And you've got to learn to trust the promises of God. And so look at that. uh, King Artaxerxes issued a decree to restore and to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. And that was in 444 BC. So it was a time of trouble. In 52 days, the walls would be rebuilt. And that's the, the, the seven sevens or the 49 years described in verse 25. Now, after that, there was another uh, 62 sevens and 434 or 434 years is what that amounts to until the anointed one. Well, do you understand that what I'm trying to tell you today is over 500 years before it happened, Daniel was told when Israel's Messiah would come. I'm glad he came, and I'm glad he's coming again, but not to a cross. He's coming back to take his children home to be with him, and that means every born-again, blood-washed child of God that has trusted the Lord as their Savior, thank God they will be in that number when the saints go marching in. The Bible today is not just some mere human book for your entertainment. It's not a book of fiction. It's a book of fact. 
It's a book that will change your life. It's a book that will bring you into the realization of who God is and what he'll do in your life today. And only God can predict the future. And only God does that with accuracy. And only God can carry it out to the full extent of what he says in his word. In answer to prayer, God then is laying his ultimate plan out for Daniel's people. And he has a plan. He had a plan for Daniel. God accomplished that plan. If you'll read through the pages of God's word, every place that God talked about a plan and a plan that he had for his people, God would carry out that plan. That was a plan to get the children of Israel out of exile. And when they were in Egypt, God did that. It took 40 years. That was not God's fault. It's because the children of Israel were rebellious. The Hebrews wouldn't listen to God. They wouldn't trust God. Let's not beat them up because we're in that same predicament today. We won't listen to God. We go off and do what we want to do and put false gods before the one true living God. And then we get in trouble and then we have to go back and repent. You're just spinning your wheels. Why don't you just set your sails and serve God and keep your focus and live for the Lord and let God work as he desires to work in your life. So we see that it doesn't end there. Gabriel's talking about some things that's going to happen. After 62 or 62 seven of years, which followed the seven, the seven sevens of years. So after that, the Messiah uh, will be cut off. The city of Jerusalem will be destroyed. And a week, a week after Jesus presented himself as Israel's king, he was crucified. Remember that? Remember that, you know, he marched into Jerusalem and they were shouting Hosanna. And then a week later, they had him on a cross crucifying him. 37 years in AD 70, the Roman armies came and burned Jerusalem. There has been war in the Middle East ever since. All this happened as Daniel 69 sevens of years, and they came about exactly as God had decreed or said or predicted. But the prophecy talked about 70 years of 70 years of years in verse 24. And you can look at that. And there are seven years that are unaccounted for. Now, what about these seven years there that he brings to our attention? There is a time out between Daniel 69 and 77. So listen, I'm convinced that the that really the, the referees of heaven is about to blow the whistle. Something catastrophic is about to happen. The ruler who will come, it was talked about in verse 26, is not the Christ, but the Antichrist. And he will come and people will follow him and be deceived because of his, of his tactics. And of course, there will be seven years of tribulation on this earth. The people, the Romans, destroyed Jerusalem in AD 70. Well, a ruler out of the same region, which is basically in the European uh, theater that we know today, he will sign a seven-year peace treaty with Israel, and in the middle of seven years, he will break that treaty. You can read that in the book also of Revelation, and desecrate the temple in Jerusalem, and re wreak havoc amongst the people. And this prophecy of Daniel 9 then proposes four events, and I'll give them to you real quickly because we're quickly running out of time. Israel must become a nation. Done. 1948. Two. Israel must control Jerusalem again. Done. In 1967. The Roman Empire will come together. It's happening. And it's being done right now in the European theater today. And then all 28 member states of the European Union uh, basically have talked and come together and signed treaties and I'm telling you, things are happening in today's society that points to the glorious coming of the Lord. And the fourth thing is, Israel must rebuild her temple again. And the only piece in the puzzle that yet remains today in Daniel 9 to be fulfilled is the building of Israel's temple. And let me tell you, that can happen. It doesn't take long. And it, the coming of the Lord is not contingent upon that to be done before, but it can be done during the tribulation. So don't be discouraged today. Trust God that he is going to accomplish his plans. And we've got to learn to trust God, pray to God, put our confidence in him and rely upon him and know today he's the God today. He's no ordinary God. He's an extraordinary King of kings and Lord of lords, 
altogether lovely, can do all things. She's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star, and there's nothing too hard for our God. Our God is in control, and our God is coming again soon and very soon, for we shall see the King, and what a great day that will be. I pray today that we brought some blessings to you and encouraged your heart. We had a lot of material, and I, I had to rush through it, and I pray it was a blessing. Maybe we'll come back to it one day, take a little bit more time, and extract some more information for you. But as we're in closing out today, I'm so glad that you've joined us on Viewpoint. It's always a blessing to come to you on a live TV. We also air this on my Facebook page and other media sources. It's also on our uh, YouTube account. So there's multiple ways that you can get it. If you know someone that's not on Chantel Cable, you can tell them about going to a live gbc.com. You can click on my Facebook page, Carlton Duck. Or you can click on YouTube and you can watch some of our church programs and Viewpoint Spiritual Perspective and How Sweet the Sound and all the other things that we're trying to do to bring you more information and inspiration from the Word of God. Guess the Mini Baptist Church is located at 411 Blue Ridge Street here in the heart of Lynchburg. Not hard to find. One block off of Lakeside Drive. As a matter of fact, Blue Ridge Street is directly across from a little pizza parlor called JoJo's Pizza. Not hard to find us. You can Google search us and it'll bring you right to the front door. Our worship service is 9.30, 11.30 a.m. Two great services on Sunday right now. One day we'll get back to more of the schedule we used to be on, but not right now. But uh, the Lord is blessing that church and you can come and be inspired by music. You can be challenged by the message and you can bring your teens and your kids and they can get the kitty care kit and all the other great things that's happening here in Gethsemane for our kids, for our adults, and for everyone. It's a great place to you for you to come and also to bring your family. And I just believe that you will be blessed and you will enjoy the presence of the Lord. Come see us and we trust that God will mightily bless you. We are praying for you and trusting today the goodness of the God of heaven in your benefit. And continue to pray for us. We need your prayers as you need ours. And we love to partner with people and pray and seek the Lord and trust him for his great outpouring of what he can do. And may he enrich and bless your life so richly, so abundantly that you'll be overtaken by the blessings of our great, awesome, and wonderful God. Thank you for watching Viewpoint. I'm Carlton Duck. I appreciate you. I'm praying for you, and I love you in the Lord. Come see us at Gethsemane Baptist Church. We're still the church where the shout has not gone out. God bless you.